Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast. With me, obviously, the one and only Hardy Bard, but I have fallen back with me as my co host. <laughs> you peaked on my end, brother. <laughs> How's it going? It's going all right, going all right. Because today we got a po- our podcast focus theme being Borderlands. That's right, the V one and only video game series, and it's gonna get a little interesting. Last time when we were doing our Star Wars one, we did all the filmography. And knowing that the video game series for Borderlands, we don't have that much to go off of. We do know one thing. Borderlands has its games being carried not by its gameplay, but it's also based off of their villains and their characters. So we also have a few lists for that as well once we get through this list. So, and whenever you're ready, my fellow brother, we got our first list of all the video games in the collection. Uh, all in order to, well, kind of in order. Uh, we have the original Borderlands, obviously. We have two. We have the pre-sequels. We have three. But we also do have Tales of the Borderlands, Tales New, sorry, New Tales of the Borderlands, and Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. So. Yeah. So we're going to trash at least a few games here and there. Oh, yeah. No, a lot of these are going to get trashed on. Let's be real here. Um, Let's start off with Borderlands. You know, the OG. The reason why we even have, you know, the series to begin with. The slow slow cook, you could say, for for Borderlands. True enough. Um, I will say it's a little slow, but hear me out. I grew up with that game actually being one of my first gore games. But, well, when I mean gore games, I mean more like uh, gore violence. I was on in my household. I was allowed a lot of those type of games. So when I was hey, able to play, enough, oh yeah. So when I was able to play that game, it was fun. Graphics not so good up until I think what was it the re-update on Steam for Game of the Year. I mm, I'm a I'm a console. I'm not I'm not I'm not a PC master race, buddy. Ah, true enough, true enough. But that's why you're also here because we have two different spectrums of console master race and PC master race. On the P- on the consoles, don't they have like a game of the year edition for Borderlands yeah. the original? Yeah, that's actually it's on all platforms, but uh, you kind of ruin the joke, bro. Come on. What can I say? What can I say? I'm a butcher. That's all I got to do. Take the joke and butcher it. It, uh. But, uh... So, in my opinion, getting nostalgia out of the way, it has fairly decent combat. I would say that this is also where the, uh, the item system was being introduced as well. As it's kind of blocky with the text, uh, rarities are a little eh, but overall the story was fantastic. It sets the whole scenery of what Pandora is, as well as the characters, very well with their uh, different types of personalities and whatnot. And finally, with the whole aesthetic of like, it's not even like your classic like psycho uh, post-apocalypse uh type of shit no it's outer space it's its own planet and it's like warring um different fact like factions which are like just companies for different types of like mil- military supplies and other sorts of gizmos and doodads essentially all these companies vying to capture this one ultimate uh, MacGuffin to earn Riches and glory. Exactly. I mean, of course, in comes the uh, the Vol Hunter, which will be the playable characters and classes throughout the whole franchise. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. For me, 
nostalgia wise it's a very good game but if i were to put it onto the standard without game of the year i would say that the graphics does kind of lower it down a bit but with game of the year get, be, giving it a bit of a revival it's still pretty good i would say still still brings in the vibe of how a borderland should be at least in my opinion uh borderlands one it, it, it was, as i said it's a slow burn it doesn't really pick up till later into the game but overall the gameplay is about solid solid characters or at least the characters you beat are definitely interesting enough I'm main well cast i mean for the most part don't really say much of work but their characters their character kits are are decent enough it well i mean they they were that, they were unique though like very unique yeah, to each other enough. yeah because like you had brick where he was more of like that your tank you had Roland where he was more of like the support. And yes, I'm saying Roland's the support. I know he's a soldier, but let's face it. He had gizmos coming out of his ass to just help him in combat. I mean, come on. What do you what else do you call that? Uh tech support, I guess. <laughs> you, you could say. Hello, welcome to tech support. How may I help you? It was a lot more funny if they just made him an Indian. I was, the Indian I, I, I was trying my best, brother. I was trying my best. And we, we <laughs> both suck at Indian accents, so we can't really <laughs> fucking ruin that the, the stereotype <laughs> to a great joy. We can't do that. True enough. Um, but yeah, I will also say the DLCs were very unique as well. I wouldn't say uh, as DLCs, well as... I'd say definitely made up for it. Mm-hmm. Because I will say it's not as good as Borderlands 2, but it is up there against the rest, I will say. And that, I want to say, ends up, from, in my opinion, like overall, I'll put it in A tier. It's not S, right? But it did give us what we needed for how to set up the core of the games. It gave us an actual good story. Yes, again, slow burn. And it would have poor graphics if it wasn't for game of the year. But it had good DLC, character personalities, um, good... It had a good villain up until, I want to say, the ending, where it was kind of anticlimactic. Um, but besides that, yeah. I would say A tier. But what, what do you think? I'd say it'd be uh, the slow burn, the graphics, uh, maybe the gameplay uh, element, or just the the, the the speed of the gameplay is lackluster. But overall, story was okay. Good good characters here and there. Main villain for the most part, uh, it it she was okay. Just didn't really have much of a spotlight, despite just being there to talk through. You know, through the cut through the story, and she just dies anticlimactically right. to the to the boss. That's so I'd say the B tier. Not a bad. It's not. It's not a bad game, but it could have been better. Right. Maybe a better story, but this was just the beginning to the rest of the footprint well, of the series from here on out. Well, how about this? I'm, I'll put it in B tier for right now, but after we review the other ones, we'll see where we finally place it because right now i only see an innate tier mostly just because of how much i grew up with it but then again i do see your points as well so we'll leave it in b tier and if other games other than i would say borderlands 2 which is coming up next are higher than it then we'll probably put it somewhere else but let's see here yep borderlands 2 is next um all right Borderlands 2. Game that really kicked off. Yeah. The game of all games, in my opinion. I say, if this is not in your top 20 at least, out of how many games we have nowadays, knowing that there's a plethora of games. But if this is not in your top 20, you need to go back and reevaluate your life. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> this was the game. Okay? Like, 
not only did it have a great cast of characters, not only did it have a great story and a great villain, it's got, wh why is there an ad? I'm not advert. I'm not advertising <laughs> Medicaid. No. Well, that's closer, by the way. If yeah, it ain't free health care, it ain't health care on my channel. Get out of here. Hey, we live in America. Health care is, is, is a dream to us. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? True enough. But as I was trying to get at, it had a had very great gameplay with it. Now, it's not as updated as Borderlands 3, but it was great for its time. And the last thing was not only free content that came out throughout later in the years, but great DLC. I mean, come on. We had the original Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, technically speaking, but it was known as Assault of the Keep for Tiny, like, D&D DLC. We had... It was basically d and It was basically yeah. d, &D with guns. Yeah. But the thing was, it deferred from the now standalone game, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, because it was actually, in my opinion, more unique than the actual standalone game. Yeah. And then we had the other DLCs, which we had uh, Captain Scarlet and the Bootylicious DLC. Yep. That one was pretty good. Um, we also had a lot of other DLCs um, kind of ranging from the holidays, right? Oh, I misclicked all that. Oopsie daisy. Nice. Nice going. Thank you. I uh, Definitely professional over here, guys. But, um, where is my mouse now? Okay, well, my mouse is missing. Great. Talk about professionalism, guys. <laughs> okay. Oh my okay. word! I don't. Hold on. Everything good? No, my mouse is actually dead as god. Oh, uh, there it goes. I found. Yeah, I love the video. <laughs> I, I found my mouse. <laughs> Good news, everyone. <laughs> I have found my mouse. Okay. After another good start. Right? That's all I'm gotta say. But all I was trying to say, though, is like we had different DLCs from Captain Scarlet's DLC to the original D&D DLC. But we also had the other DLC, like, added on to that which was literally the holiday ones um more specifically if we want to think about it we had the um we had not only i want to say christmas but we also had thanksgiving valentine's day um we even yeah. had a uh we even had one where it was the summer like Come on now. It can't get better than that. That's true. Um, the other DLCs that I'm trying to think of off the top of my head other than the main two that are locked into the Vault of Memories um, was Sir Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt. By the way, a better execution of DLC than how Borderlands 3 did it. We also not only did got that, but we also got Mr. Torg's Campaign of Carnage. We also got the Creature Slaughter Dome. We also got a lot of different skins. And then my my personal favorite out of all of them. Not 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 counting obviously the you know packs that help you upgrade your level. But I want to bring up the fact that this was the first DLC the first game to have the DLCs for character editions. Which added two more very nice additions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Krieg and Gage. Definitely, definitely fun characters to play. Right? So, 
other than me talking about Borderlands 2, what do you think about Borderlands 2? Yeah, it's definitely a new revamped it's game style with uh, after Borderlands 1. Gameplay is definitely solid, a lot more fast paced, a lot more action oriented. And again, the characters are very interesting from even that of the uh, the mob enemies as well, like the raiders, the bandits, all are at least far more characterized, even though it's just like the whole crazy insanity type. But overall, they it, they also carry part into the series as well, like giving up the world of Pandora and how it truly is. A comedic and often a, a very depressing thought of it once you start looking to bits and pieces of the lore here and there mm-hmm. as you tra- traverse through and of course, the plethora of guns, especially how to really also redesign most guns into very polarized, unique styles. And of course, the unique uh, gimmicks and stat bonuses, especially the legendary weapons as you oh, yeah. gain them through various submissions or just trying to grind them through boss, boss raids. And oh, without, I think... think- Oh, sorry. Just my little uh, self-insert before con- having you continue. Wasn't there also pearlescence in this game? Like, the, uh, like a better, like a better version of like orange in this game for like loot rarity. Uh, I would say the loot rarity orange was probably the, was considered legendary. You had the common, which was white. Right. The green was uncommon. Blue was rare. Uh, purple, I think this. Purple, I th- I'd say it's it's rare. It's it's rare, not common. To, it's not very. It's not easy enough to get. Oh yeah. Legendary okay. was one of the most difficult. But yeah. oh, speaking of legendary, sometimes you actually do get lucky on some character runs. I know I played as uh, Axton for for the first time. I played Zero and in, in Maya. Through mm-hmm. my playthrough, and then I just picked roll uh, an a- action, and I managed to get like three legendaries. They were very low level weapons, but the fact that I could get three legendaries from the beginning of the game really just says that you'll you'll have a good time right. from getting guns and dealing with various things in the game. But um, and I think getting the guns was probably the best part of the game. So I did I mean, have. I did have to look it up a little bit because I did have to make sure. So with Captain Scarlet, that's where Seraph weapons came into play, which was uh, pink, which was a higher level than legendary, but also E-Tech, which is magenta. Then huh. we apparently had Ever Vesselant, which was added in 2019, which was the highest level of rarity you could get. In the game and then pearlescent which is the second highest was added with the new dlc of commander lilith's uh new one where you could get that one for free yes you could pay for it now with actual money but back when it first came out you could have actually got this like in your hands right off the bat like it was n- not even that hard to get your hands on on free content like that um, but yeah, no, like, that's what I was kind of thinking of, like, this was one of the only games in the Borderlands series where you got better, like, gear that wasn't just legendary. And I say, before 3, this game really just, without the grind of it, and once you got some of these guns, I'd say it just really felt more earned than just candy. Right. Immediate candy hand out to you. Right, because, like... Legendaries, I get it. Like, you get it every so often. But they were hard to get come by. If anything, if it, I barely played a little bit of Commander Lilith. Um, mind you, I do have a lot of hours into Borderlands 2, Borderlands, the whole series. But I barely played a little bit of Commander Lilith. But even then, I could not even get a single pearlescent. Unless if it was just handed off to me because, you know, the content had the main mission give it to you type thing. So, if anything, the these game this game was very like if you fought for it long enough, you would get it. Type thing. Like you earned this. Here you go, champ. But 
yeah. would you like to continue your thought process before I had to interrupt? My bad. Mm, overall, I, I dragged it on too long. Good, good, good amount of gun. Good characters. The best villain of all time. Oh yeah. Overall, a very good game. Once you, a very good game when you get it. When it came out, and I, it's still a great game to this day. Once you get into it. So yeah, I'd say it's the best game to ever play. That's for sure. I would also say it had a better Vault Beast too than all of the rest, like the Warrior. Yeah, oh, the Warrior. Mm -hmm. I would say so. I. Yeah, I, I could definitely say. I mean, I the boss fights for for the storylines of Borderlands was they're they're decent it, enough. I just never really. I don't. I'm just. I'm trying to think if was any of the fights stood out. But overall, I'd say the Warrior was was a good fight. Oh yeah. Especially with the fact that I got some decent loot out of the out, out of that. For, the story though it. that I liked about at least Borderlands Two was that it started you off right off the bat with oh you're being hunted down because obviously they know that you're a threat and they need to get rid of you as soon as possible like <laughs> and the fact oh, yeah, the game really, the story really starts off right then and there after the 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 events of one right it really kicks off and then even then it keeps you on your toes because you have to get back and then even then you're still on your toes because the villain n does not give up and he's so cocky, but it's a good type of cocky, in my opinion, that gives the flavor of the character. Like, he makes it present of why he's being cocky and how much firepower he has. And it's only until you put pressure upon him in which he gets a little bit more tensed up, but he tries to still stay in character up until the part where you have to actually fight him off. And then he gets either um well if you're a noob you're gonna die to him but you get the chance to actually f kill him for once for everything he has done so that's fair yep. i'm putting this game though in an s tier 100 percent. oh yeah s tier is fine by me oh yeah yeah overall the storyline yeah you kick off as a vault hunter supposedly you're going after the vault only to be Lured to your death. Handsome Jack is pretty much the greatest antagonist throughout the entire game. And once you reach to the point of halfway into the story, then that's when it gets really good. Mm -hmm. Now, to go off to the next game, which is Borderlands the pre sequel. I'm going to say this because the fact being that I was. This was one of the games where I was excited for. And then now, as a grown man, I realize that it had very little to no impact on me whatsoever <laughs> when it comes to uh, memorabilia. Uh, Borderlands 3 was by far a very disappointment in the wrong oh. direction of where it went. Pre-sequel, not 3. Pre-sequel. Oh, shit. Yeah, pre-sequel. Oh, <laughs> you just yeah. skipped through two different games just getting to Borderlands 3 right then and there. Right off the bat. Just bam. <laughs> yep. It's like Borderlands 3 was a shitty ass game. Uh, we're on pre sequel. What games? <laughs> <laughs> See, well, I mean, at least you agree on me. On, it wasn't that memorable, at least. <laughs> but... Alright, all right, let's, let's get to pre sequels. This is another favorite game of mine. The pre sequels <laughs> is a good game. Well, pre sequel, in my opinion, right, was just like, for me, like, added DLC if you were to think about it, to two. That's how it kind of felt. Especially with how the story went, which, by the way, as the gameplay goes, the story at least told us why we started right off the bat in Borderlands 2 where we were, as well as like every other like event happening in the game. Like, it explains everything. And... What... Well, well party is trying to explain this is the pre-sequel to handsome jacks's uh origin story at this point well and we already know how his character is in two but i'd say the pre-sequel helps build his character up just a bit and then you're going to realize that's how his downfall went 
now, 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 Fallen, don't try to nerd explain them on this. I mean, it's already in the title, pre sequel. Come oh, on. Too bad. I am nerd. I am nerd explaining with my nutsack on the screen right now. So, pop apples, bitch. <laughs> and just like pre sequel, it's unnoticeable to the naked eye. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> But yeah, um, I would say that the story at least had some impact with the pre-sequel. I would say that characters, including DLC characters, because this was the other game that came out with DLC characters. None of the rest did, sadly. But apparently, they did not really do very well with, like, well, I will say this much, right? The main cast for pre-sequel character-wise are a bunch of villains except for claptrap who is a dumbass because we already know that uh, he's the comic um, relief not necessarily um, most of the characters okay so so we have nisha right wait. that's a villain yeah we have nisha who's the uh lawbringer if you remember uh, yeah handsome jack's girlfriend uh yes. There's also Wilhelm, his, Which, his lackey, that becomes a full-on si full cyborg. Because he's obsessed with replacing his organs with mo modified parts. And, and each time he... And he's cybernetic and for the simplest reasons. Which, hey, a man with simple with simple wants. Can't, can't fault him at that. I will also say that I would give Wilhelm more credit than any of the other characters when it came to being creative. Because each time he leveled up, you could hear his voice getting transmogrified from normal, like his normal voice to being more robotic, as though you were actually like replacing parts of him. So yep. I will give it to that at least. But I would say that Athena, anti-hero. I'm not gonna lie, she literally gives off that vibe and she keeps on antagonizing with the main cast from like Roland and Lilith, Brick, and Mordecai. So Yeah, from priest from the priest from the first game to the to the storyline being told from her perspective, yeah. She's more or less of the anti here, but then again, she was a member of the uh, Atlas Assass Assassin Squad. Mm-hmm. And essentially, her whole life was just been forced by a corporation to become a killer for them at any at any time and point. Mm -hmm. But of course, they backstabbed her, and she's now on her own, and right. has lost her sister thanks to them. Mm -hmm. And now she just tries to try to get her life together. And of course, in the pre sequel, she also gets herself a girlfriend. But mm -hmm. yeah, and then we I mean, all oh, the character is more like Why I wouldn't say empty. We have a Dylan's commercial going off. Come on. Stop oh, it. You just, gave away, you just gave away our location. Way to go. <laughs> uh, what What you mean? It just said... Oh, wait. Midwest is Dylan's. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Here, they don't good. know what state, though. For all they know, right. we could be in Michigan. Huh. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. What? <laughs> Uh, nothing. Oh, okay. Oh, well, oh, oh, in, oh, that, oh. in that case, um, I will say, though, DLC-wise, we get two uh, more villains, I guess, in a sense. We have Timothy. Uh, oh. Yeah, we have Timothy, who's yeah. a double ganger. But he's one of the many. He's not the one that we kill in two, surprisingly. Uh, because... Technically, he... He's he's the third. He's least the. Uh, I mean, actually, no. If I forgot the World Borderlands Three DLC. Yeah, I thought that was mainly just two of them. Yeah, there's actually from lore, I think seventy eight. There were seventy eight of them, and then a majority of them got killed off after Jack's Jack got killed. Yeah, that's true. How many? Let me double check. Um, because I think how many double gangers did Jack have? Because I thought it was 78. I could be wrong.
So, just to double check. Double checking, still, apparently, because it's not telling me. Yeah, it's not telling me anything. Gosh dang it. I, I don't know why. I just have the number 78 stuck in my head. Because I re we do I know... That may, be, that may be the accurate number at, right. at the moment. Because from what we know, because of what Angel tells us at least, that there were multiple uh, bodies of doubles that were supposed to be decoys to misdirect the assassin attempts. We already knew that. The reason why when we had to go and find one of them to kill them in the in that game right but then in the dlc we learned about timothy who just needed money so what he had to do was he signed up for hyperion's like you know test subjects uh facilities and he got himself tested for being a duplicate so they literally sawed off a lot of his like voice they sawed off his voice box, they removed his face, they got rid of a lot of things, and then they replaced it with, you know, Jack's voice and his face, etc. So Yep. Yeah. But we we get introduced to him, which at first starts off like a pussy. Literally. He's not that much of a like a guy. He's more of a boy, but then because of the whole experiment thing, he becomes more of a man because guess what they also had to put in him so that way they could, you know, make sure that he does take the part of Jack. A personality rig system into his body. So that way his brain just goes, I'm Jack. I act like Jack. I act like a freaking egotistical asshole. So... Pretty much his, his whole character for Timothy has been rewritten as once he signed up for the high period just earned some cash only for his voice to be to be surgically removed and in exchange for a jack person a jack modification of the voice and then of course they rearranged his face probably his whole body structure and then uh, a few mind altering experiments that resulted in him losing some of his memories and then after that at least uh yeah his the, the uh, Jack personality something modification where he asked to act like Jack from him, not with just how he carries him, with how he carries himself rather than just the usual Timmy as he's just uh, a, I guess a very timid man that really is just trying to make trying to make a living and now has to play the role of a cra of a crazed man that will one day bring about the end of the world until the vault hunters kill it, kill him but even then he literally again because of the personality rig system that is in him he starts acting more like jack because there was even a voice recording in pre-sequel where he became more douchebaggy when he was trying to pick up some women because they went oh aren't you jack and then he goes yeah yes i am how about you ladies come down to my pad and so on and so forth and it's just like okay i mean it's not that wrong i mean at least there were some benefits to it but of course you know him being jack he has to play the part and he does play that part yeah unfortunately whether he likes it or not and up until i think borderlands 3 he stopped acting that part and has like ticks here and there which is kind of like okay well what was the point then of these experiments but besides the point for pre-sequel i mean handsome jack was that a great of a villain and after his after what he did in the end of sequels he was now a a crazed psychotic man right. and the fact that he would need doubles to help to help the you know, the to save all possible killers that are trying to end his life with him now right. the leader the ceo of our period and it that, would make sense he would have right. have doubles and then with the other dlc character we had aurelia which is Hammerlock's sister. Best girl, by the way. Oh, that's best girl. Not Lilith, not Maya. Aurelia? 
Mm, nah, yeah, I really. I'd say Maya. Okay, Maya is good, man, but Lilith mid tier. But Aurelia Lilith has- mid tier. You heard it here, folks. Lilith is mid tier. You oh, have yeah, I am. Yeah, you have the whole Lilith fandom just on your ass, boy. Like holy. I know. Hey, excuse me, I like being a bad bitch. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, please. Um. <laughs> But yeah, no, Aurelia, I would say, does come off with the whole girl boss type situation, but not in the way of saying it in how most people would say it. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like that. Okay, so... No, 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 with, yeah. I meant... Yeah, she is... I, she's a cold-hearted, evil, rich girl that yeah. happily spends her money at any point in time to the point that she forgets about half the shit she bought. But she's a cruel, evil woman that gets that does whatever she wants and gets what she wants. Yeah, even the point yeah. of costing the lives of people. That's literally all I meant to say when I said girl boss. Because literally that is the whole thing. Is like she also demands respect. She takes a dominant role. Like that's the type of woman she is, you know? And she, torments her brother a lot. Oh yeah. Cruelly. I think now I could be wrong about this. I can. Doesn't she also judge him for his sexuality as well? Mm. I think there was something about that. Now, again, I, I could be wrong. Believe, I don't believe that was ever brought up at any point, unless that's, let's say, we have to go through comics and book materials to oh, find that. Oh, true enough. It could be in there, but who? I can't. Now, I'm I mean, not saying the, that in the, any... It, sense of derogatoriness as well for those who are listening in i'm bringing it up more because that's what siblings would normally do to each other they will find one thing that sticks out and then they will just poke fun at you for it um just mm. well but no yeah. i think i don't think that that was a factor in that and the reason why she has such a a cruel relationship with her with her brother right I think it was just mainly the fact that that's just how our character was. Um, I'm trying to double check something. Uh, you're good. So, all we already we already know that she was the heiress to the Hammerlock family fortune. She's the sister of Hammerlock, and. She shares a strained relationship due to her miserable treatment of him, and it's exorbitantly wealthy socialite. She was taking up the hobby of hunting, traveling the galaxy to seek dangerous creatures to kill, as well as make her brother's life even more miserable. Ah. Yep. Really, yeah. But in Borlands 3, there was a judgment between him and Jacobs. Monty Jacobs, or not Monty Jacobs? Cl- Is it Clay? No. Who's the who? Okay, Montgomery. S- no. Wait, Fudge. I am uh, fucking up right now. Right? I'm trying to remember uh, the Jacobs that is alive. The Jacobs that is alive. I would say maybe Montgomery because. That sounds like that does sound Wainwright. Like no, it's Wainwright. Ah. So the thing is, there was a judgment between uh, him being with Wainwright. Now, does that technically derive towards the sexuality thing? No, I don't think so. It's just more of her poking fun at him for dating someone for money. Because she knows that she gained the family fortune. Okay, that's what it was about. Okay. Yeah, we're getting a little sidetracked right here. Let's Sorry, I wasn't trying to get sidetracked. I I was just trying to remember something because, like, I remembered that that there were certain things with I want to say either three or pre sequel that was about that. So I just was trying to bring that into the light, but. I also can hey. no worries. And as I said, can't be wrong. But I put pre sequel in B tier, which I really want to move Borderlands to A tier in that case. Because again, 
pre-sequel just establishes the story characters are not that very like rememberable to a certain extent even though we just talked about it for a longer time than the other two games i, I i'm talking but, what, what rememberable characters i'd say handsome jack the playable characters um moxie since she's also since we of course we get moxie rolling in little in the game as well true true uh yeah everyone else is practically forgettable for the most part story-wise i'd say it held it hold itself okay Maybe it could have been far more interesting with maybe if the story was written in a certain direction. Right. But overall, it's still a good game. Mm -hmm. So that's why good I'm wanting to put it in. Yeah. That's why I want to put in B tier, though, is because of that. But that's me. What about you? What are you thinking? Uh, hmm. Good characters, good, decent story. Uh, the guns, for sure, was also cool. The, we get the new we get new types of weapons such as the laser guns and of course we're on the moon or in space where we just have high gravity jumps and butt slams which is also the fun part as well you know what true enough and i think this was the only game that we got laser guns i think yep and that's it, I, sad but true oh go ahead I'm not even sure Borderlands 3 ever did. I don't know even nope. sure they ever did like weapons in 3. Borderlands 3 did bring back Atlas guns, which were not uh, introduced in Borderlands 2 again because it was in they oh. were in Borderlands 1. They were remo removed in Borderlands 2 because it makes sense because Atlas was a dying company and 1 was dead in 2 and then around the time of 2 to 3, that's when we got Tales of the Borderlands. And then, uh, well, we're just a, we're actually about to talk about that game soon, but Reese brings back um, Atlas to its former glory because of certain programmings that are tied with Hyperion and basically help with Vault, like finding uh, Atlas in a sense. Now, uh, the D to the Atlas Corporation was. Mm -hmm. I think either belonging to Handsome Jack or belongs to the antagonist of the Tales of Borderlands. So essentially, Reese managed to get himself the corporation through paperwork, and right. he managed to bring it back to life. So let's go right into it then, unless if you had any problems with our current standing with S tier Borderlands 2, A tier Borderlands, and then B tier pre sequel. So uh, 2 1 I'm pre sequel. I'm, I'm, fine with, I'm fine with B. Uh, Aurelia is still S tier, but overall B is fine with me. Well, we will get to characters hopefully soon for playability. <laughs> so hold your horses, horn boy. All right. But I do will say when we go into this next video game, uh, Borderlands for Tales of the Borderlands, I will be looking up a little bit of that. Yes, I know. Earlier ago, I said I played a majority of the games, but let's be real here. I never saw the Tales of the Borderlands series as actual canon until recent, more recently because it was more established in 3 that these were actually canon. In my, it, This was all in my head though, keep in mind that. So for anyone else, they would have already automatically seen it as canon, me not so much. But besides that. Um, my reasoning why, though, as well, is because earlier within um, the company Telltale's games, they usually yep. made, like, games that were off of already existing IPs, but they didn't really follow a lot of any of the stories. They did their own little thing. That's why I also thought that. So... So look up a little bit of Tales of the Borderlands. We know that it's a point-and-click graphic adventure comedy. And obviously there's going to be po puzzles to play and whatnot, so on and so forth. The main part of the story basically goes into uh, Pandora and explaining that our protagonists of Reese and Fiona... Um, Reese being a Hyperion employee who has been working with his best friend Vaughn to get promoted to into a higher ranks of the company, but is stimmied by their new boss and rival Hugo Vasquez, 
um, which in mine, Fiona being a con artist working on Pandora along with her younger sister, Sasha, both who learned under their mentor and father figure, Felix. Uh, the stories do explore the characters coming together as they show some common events that, from the perspectives from each character. Um, they call it the big fish version of what happened. But anyways, with other new characters in the game, as well as some reoccurring figures, you know, uh, we got... A lot going on with how that story went i believe as well you brought up the fact that they ca came across atlas i think i even brought it up a little bit too but basically um with how it went an old, an old facility with one living guy still alive i believe or something it's been a while since i played the story for a mummified dead guy from right. Atlas. And from that, to look up who owned the deed to Atlas Borderlands. I need to look that up because it wasn't explaining it in what I was trying to read up. So. Uh well, I after think being kind of wiki, but. yeah. So after being defeated by the original Vault Hunters in the first game, Atlas stock plummeted, and the D fell into the hands of Hyperion. So that's okay. That makes sense. No, that makes sense. So Hyperion overall owned it, but if we know better from pre-sequel, when the Sentinel was destroyed, Jack became Jack. Jack killed off the original CEO to become the CEO of Hyperion. So it used to have been owned by Hyperion overall until Jack kind of stepped up, made himself more of the main antagonist as well as the main CEO of Hyperion, which then it became into his hands. However, dearly because of that, uh, Jack is now dead, which then goes into the hands of reese through taking it for himself and securing ownership of atlas when he stumbles upon the document and he yep. then becomes the new ceo now yep. a play. yeah, a plays off. Yep. now it doesn't really explain how he stumbled upon it but that's uh, episode four Episode 4, when it involved bringing down the Hyper Hyperion Station, obviously you have to play five episodes in, and of course, Handsome Jack does make a comeback for the last time. Gotcha. See, yeah, again, I, I wish I played these games because, yeah, again... Really they're... Should, man. It's, it's, a, it's a good storytelling. You'll, you'll get a good kick out of it. Yeah, but for the most part, all I know is that some of the characters could have uh, from what i've heard some characters could have been a little less annoying other characters played phenomenal and for the most part i think if one and only thing that was a little off-putting was i think the remembrance of the vault creature i believe it's known as the traveler mm. but besides that for it being a reinvention of the series, quote unquote, because let's face it, it's not your actual, it's not a shooter game, it's a puzzle story game. But I would say that it does a well enough job to kind of bring forth the actual like storytelling. It, it, it does a well enough job for really adding more to the lore and adding at least something new the game sure there's not it's def, it's obviously made by telltale that took it to a storytelling perspective rather than just like the action oriented moments yeah in in the other borderlands games right well the storytelling really plays it all especially the fact with the two main leads having troy troy baker and uh 
what's her name? She's a they they're both prominent voice actors that play way a Troy lot of ba characters. So it was Troy Baker, but it's also loyal uh laura bailey which mind you yeah, i know who laura, laura ba bailey is she's from um she's from critical role and other um shows and whatnot i just know her mostly from critical role because uh, she she does she's be a lot of no 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 yeah laura, laura bailey she's a very prominent voice actor that she has a lot of voices her voice is is used a lot in games she does she does play Serana from Skyrim for Skyrim, for ah. the DLC. Um, I think she also does play some roles in other Telltale games. She I plays she as young have. Trunks and Goat Tanks and Dragon Ball Z. She also okay. plays Toru Honda from Fruit Basket. Um, this is all anime, though. Um, oh, just look, I'd say there's definitely, uh, I'm trying to think of other games. She was Schrodinger um, in Helsing Ultimate. Okay. I mean, let's be real here. Schrodinger was a good character in Helsing Ultimate. Let's, let's be real here on that. Try not to get too sidetracked, but you know, but yeah, no, I get, I get what you're trying to say though. Like she's from a lot of shows. She's been in a lot of the Marvel series, DC series. She's even been in oh, Ruby. Yeah, she... Oh yeah, I think she was. Yeah. Yeah. She's also yeah, Eli's he... girlfriend in Rick and Morty. Huh. Mhm. Mm All right. Well. Yeah, she, she's she and Troy are just in places where you're like, God damn, this is this, this is another place that I just heard you from before right but, uh, then, but yeah all right so back to the main topic tales of the tales of Boy borderlands in right. my opinion it's a good right. game a tier for most in my book a in your books okay uh did you also know that patrick warburton was in this game oh yeah I, he played the oh. main he played the rival in the bo new boss hugo vasquez hmm no, um, I don't think so. I haven't. Man, that's something I know. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. I will say that since I don't have a full standing on the game uh, series, I just know who the characters are because of Borderlands Three. I will say. Wait, wait, wait! wait, wait. I want to get to a side tangent. Mm -hmm. The Borderlands really does have these characters grow. To be who they are after after the end of episode five right but of course when Borderlands 3 comes out that i would say that was full character assassination right there they yeah. fully butchered these characters reese and Vosh were have been or bond have been utterly just de-characterized for mm -hmm. what they went through in tales of borderland mm -hmm. and why we get these sort of comedic cringy versions of them which right. obviously they're just they're, they are not right for that for Borderlands 3 at all, but so given what events, given the uh, current uh, trend with characters that have characters, right? So I'm just gonna put uh, A tier for uh, Tales of the Borderlands. Again, I don't have much of an opinion other than just knowing like the characters for who they are and going off of that. Um, Borderlands 3. Now, you're going to be very sad to hear this, but Borderlands 3 is one of my top three highest tier hours in the game. And I have a majority of the achievements for the game. Yeah, be, I mean, be disappointed in me. No, no, I just <laughs> take, I take the crown of disappointment here because... No, I... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Hey, it's fine you take the crown of disappointments. I mean, I have a co-worker that plays Borderlands 3 a bit religiously. He's he's more of he just just plays games just to relax mm -hmm. and just kill time. But overall, yeah, you can take that crown. Yeah, no, because like the thing is, I played this game not religiously, but just to see like just to play it through, right? Because it was in the newest game, it had at least some good functions. I will give it that. It had good functions. 
But my god, they have butchered characters. They have butchered the story. They have butchered villains. And they also butchered DLC. Brother, when I de beat most of the DLC, I got top 10% of players who have achieved this achievement. One of my best achievements on Steam is one of those achievements. That's how bad it is. That's why I'm taking the crown. I literally have a point, a 2.7% out of all players have earned this achievement. And it is the podcast, ironically, um, DLC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. It was the ghost podcast DLC. I got the 2.7% of the players have earned this achievement on that. And let me tell you, the game itself, the only credits I'll give it to is being able to have good voice actors and at least some good personalities with the characters, right? With playable characters. And the gameplay was all right for a brand new version of Borderlands. The story, however, was crap, only due to the fact being that it was so convoluted to the point where I did not even like the villains. Like, what what was my motivation? They they were just like streamer fanboy and girl thinking that they're gods and having a god complex. I'm sorry, but that doesn't resonate energy at all from Jack at all. Like, come on. And then they're right. actually beating our asses. That's actually pathetic. I'm sorry. I, if I were, if I was in the same position, I would not even let them been able to suck away Lilith's powers. I would have just beat their asses right then and there, and they would have been out for commission. All right. So let me throw, let me toss in my two cents right now. Right. So for Borderlands Three, the hype for it through the trailers, unfortunately, it was it was the best that we all fell for like other games before, but. Through that, through the lies and maybe some deception, the game was overall decent in terms of the mechanics and gameplay. It got a good, it had, it had a great, or not a great, it had a quite the overhaul change from how one and two were, and of course the pre-sequels. Right. And uh, uh, oh, go ahead. And and I'd say. Maybe the, the the new Vault Hunters characters play set play sets and the adding them. No, I know they still did the same tree. Never mind. But well, not hmm. exactly. I mean, I would say that the only decent DLC that we got was when they added a new tree to each of them. But they all have different trees. Um, there were similar. I will say. Flack and Zane did have like one thing similar, which was like Invis, but Flack's Invis was more like they he went he's noticeable, but he's still quote unquote visible, whereas Zane goes invisible and you can't really see him as much. But he could also teleport with his clone that he has. But besides the point, no, I I, I kind of see where you're coming from though. Um. I'm trying to also think um other than that we're taken along into the whole universe though and you would have thought right that oh my god we get to see the whole like universe we're gonna be not like thrown too like fast into the whole story we're gonna take our time in each world get to actually beat a lot of vaults right no no I would say, yeah, gameplay-wise, it's it's a great overhaul change, but story-wise, yeah, they butchered the story. The These villains we get, the Calypso Twins, are by far the worst generic villains we've gotten. The fact that we have two characters who are the villains that want to do this whole live Twitch stream, but, and obviously that's really annoying, so I don't know why we're dealing with these, I don't know, I guess. Well, that's steel C. <laughs> I will get to that against modern yeah. streamers nowadays, but other than that, yeah, they're terrible villains. Now that's the, for sure. Yeah. 
Now, the there and the characters were definitely butchered a lot. Yeah, that's for sure too. I will say that the actual podcast is DLC. It was more of a streamer like like advocated personality for the main villains, I would say. But oh my god. You got to agree with me on this one part. Like we both have to just agree on this. All right, what's the one part? Ava is the worst character ever. Ah, oh, hands down. The ever. worst. Like she's worse <laughs> than freaking Link's little like freaking I can't remember the fairy. Fuck. Fuck. The fairy from hey. Legend of Zelda. She's worse than that. Ah. Uh. Where they're like, get up, Link. Get up. It's time to go, Link. I'm like, no, it's worse yeah. than that. I'm sorry. I know, I know what you mean. And it, no, not yet. But <laughs> fair enough. Ava's character arc in that story was by far. No, her character is by far the worst introduction to the storyline and they didn't really mean to ruin her character but given that how they presented her character and then we later get the cut content of her oh my god dude it's it really does baffle me the fact that we have a we have her a scene of her fully acting as she how she should have been rather how we got her in the third in the final in the final game if anything, where she lashes out, blames everyone but herself for the fact that she went down to the vault in trying to in in the hopes of trying to uh, what try to be something to be a, a awesome vault hunter and become the next siren. Only instead to got her mentor killed and trying to be in a, and just absolute absolutely. Dude, oh. if, if anything. I, I hey, 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 she's a disappointment and got my butt blood boiling, but yeah, overall, I will her attitude, her characterization, her per personality, dude, terrible character. If anything, dude, I will say that we, since you brought up cut content that was still not even added to the game, yeah, we get to see all the storyboards that they could have chosen with, but they still went with what they did, and it kind of made me uh, ponder, like, why did you do this? Why did you yeah, do this? And if anything, true. the one question that still goes in my head is, yes, we do get ki we do get the main cast killed every so often, right? Obviously, like with Roland, for instance. Roland died in 2 because of the fact that um, with our main pro antagonist, Handsome Jack, he's trying to make a message and portray the said message. And with three i get it a character was going to die but why did you have to have maya of all characters killed off the way that she was like if you're gonna kill off her of all characters do it in a bit more of a respectful manner than what you have because i'm not gonna lie the way that she died was not deserved she should have deserved no. a better death. That's just me. Yeah, Raven deserved a better death, if not maybe not to have died off. The storyline in three was definitely it. It definitely need to be put back into the oven. Maya's death, and then freaking somehow Patricia ends up as another siren thanks to Angel because of somehow off-screen event. Where Angel decides to give her si bless her siren powers to Patricia, or was her name Patricia, the crazy scientist lady that also yeah got from Borderlands Two it was Patricia, yeah, and she was the main yeah. like researcher of Iridian, and don't get me wrong, she even in three before she became a siren was a all right character through and through. But yeah, I do agree with you on the fact, like, why did she become a siren to even begin with? They're, like, it's kind of ironic, right? That out of all people in the worlds, right? It goes to certain people. It always goes to certain people. When Angel no, passed... No, 
The lore built around Siren is that when a Siren dies, their powers are given to any random woman out across the universe. But right. they can also. But there's also the thing where if a Siren knows someone, knows someone as let's say a friend, lover, or family member, then that power can be passed on to them. Right, but so essentially, if the Siren knows someone, they can pass their power to with with a whole heart and trust, or of course, it goes random. But you also have to realize the one thing that ha that we should know about. If I remember correctly, Maya's powers went to Ava. Which means that yeah. when the Tyrene woman died, that meant that that's when Patricia became a siren. That was the only You mean... Way. You mean Ava, because Patricia was like a siren, like half half into the game once you save her. Right. I'm talking about Tyrene. Tyrene was a, another siren. She was one of the sirens. If yeah, you didn't that's remember. True, yeah, that's true. yeah. And when she died, that's when Patricia became one. Because that happened near the end, if you remembered. Unless if I'm mistaking something. No, you're mistaken. Uh in Borderlands 3, we she gets kidnapped by Tyreen once we save Hammerlock and kill off the vault the vault monster on the planet with the Jacobs. She gets teleported to Pandora again. We go down there to save her, and then we kill off this boss. Next thing that happens in the cutscene, Patricia frees herself with Siren powers. No, Ava got the powers at the end of Borderlands 3. Patricia got was already a Siren. To begin with, and uh, she revealed it halfway to the game. Uh, hey, hey, Fallen. Yeah. Apparently, we're both wrong. Uh, okay, lay it No, on no, me. no. Yeah, no, I had to look it up just to make sure, right? Apparently, up after the death of Angel in Borderlands 2, Tannis unwittingly inherited her siren powers. And then subsequently spends a large amount of time and effort mastering them in secret beneath the abandoned dull mining installation. Meaning that she already had these powers beforehand, but she didn't want to reveal them until that scene that you just described. Yeah, off screen, yeah, that's what they did. So 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 I would say that how you describe the scene that was correct but apparently we we're both wrong on how she obtained her powers because apparently angel gave it to her like you were just explaining yeah. where it just gets passed on uh, yeah yeah it's more of a red card that's what happened that i want to say that's a red con. was this actually established in borderlands 2 or was this established in 3 that's the real question because mm more or less not sure I, I don't know if they fully win full detail but i think three that's where they really they really hammered in more details of how these sirens came to be and the fact that there's a seventh siren sister out there somewhere right so yeah there's a lot, there's a lot more shit to it that they more or less hand fisted into three mm. when when it, when it was about to be announced right um but besides all that the story was eh. I never liked the DLCs for this game, by the way. The only good one was uh, Krieg's one. And even then, that was about it. And to also... Uh, some of the DLCs stand out just fine. Uh, maybe the Battle Royale DLC where they brought back Axton and uh, Salvador. Are you referring to the freaking... Not the... Yeah, I know which one you're talking about, Axton and Salvador, and then it's the whole, like, Fortnite memed one, and then it's literally just a battle, it's literally a battle royale in Borderlands, if I'm not mistaken, right? It is, it is, it pretty much is. Yeah, and... and you go around and collect loot in a certain amount of time as you kill a bunch of mobs of enemies, and then you move to the next zone and the next zone. That's pretty much what their take was. I think it was like a this sort of 
half idea of deciding to bring a beat a, a battle a battle royale to Borderlands and online and everything. But I don't know if that was an extra thing or that was just made up shit for this DLC that they brought. But because I was thinking, that, oh wow, a BR for Borderlands, okay. Yeah, and that may or may not be interesting. <laughs> and the thing is, I remembered that at the time it blew up for like a good few days, and then it died out yeah. like immediately. And the only times that it was like played he, it were for like the rare guns that you could get because apparently they were like, oh, we need to still get people to play this BR that we put into our game. So we're going to put our best guns in here. Oh, what's that? Do you want to have the right role for the gun? Oh my God. That actually brings up my next point. The legendary loot in this game was bull. Oh uh, yeah. Yes, you it's got very because the thing is, you get it like every second. Like if it was free candy on Halloween night, yeah, ironic it because Halloween's yeah. coming around. It wasn't. But, it didn't feel earned. It was just like every other gun you would get. But it didn't feel earned. You didn't really put hours or your or any hard work to find off a boss. You got for like a regular but, mob enemy mission. But here's the problem with it. There. If you go up into the higher ranks of, like, their established, like, difficulty tiers, up to 10, right? You get yeah. these different, like, perks that come with it. And the thing is, oh, yeah. they're all different depending on which one you get. And it, if you oh, want... Yeah, you have to grind. Yeah, you literally have to grind the, all these orange weapons just so that way you get just the right one just the right one and that's the thing about this game on it's legendaries they don't feel like they're earned but they feel like it's tedious because after all this was supposed to be a legendary but you know we're gonna screw if you make it actually worse than a normal legendary because you don't have the right perk for it for your build so you now have to go yep. grind for it for several hours until you get what you're looking for like, Honestly, I would prefer what they did in, pre in the pre sequels where they gave us a machine where we can customize, where we can grind guns into hoping to get some random, random gun out of the grind. That, and if they brought in the higher tiers from Borderlands 2 like they were supposed to, yes, more cut content that was omitted by the cut content that we were supposed to get the Pearl Essence and the Rainbow uh, rarities. In the game but we never did we never did oh we were supposed to but we never did mm. and at that end of the day we were stuck with legendaries that felt like they were trash but most of them were, most of them were trash but there were some that really stood out but here's also the other thing before right. before we go into the last two games I will say that the next two are actually worse than three. So, for Borderlands 3 being good game mechanics wise, as well as just going through the game, yes, it has a lot of horrible things. I would say one redeeming thing as well about it is that they had uh, Sun Wu, if you know who he is. I forgot. And that's the thing, not many of the characters are that memorable to, to me. They don't so, really stand out, except, aside from just uh, the main cast, or at least Warlands 2 characters in one. So, okay, hold on. So, I'm talking about the voice actor for our dear, you know, mysterious character, so-called to be, um, which is... Um, Flack Trap, if you know who I'm referring to. Oh, from the uh, pre sequel DLC, right? Yes. Oh, okay. So, keeping that in mind, um, Sung Won, that's what it, that's his name, Sung Wong. He's the voice actor for Flack, but he's the guy who owns a, a YouTube channel. Um, well, that guy, yeah, that guy, I forgot mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Which, if I'm not mistaken, it should be Pro ZD. 
Yep. Pro Z. Yeah. Yeah, what about him? Yeah. No, he voiced that character. And in my opinion, uh -huh. he's a very underrated voice actor that should be given more credit where it's due. He does a lot of he... voices for like shows and TV uh, shows and video games uh, in which people don't recognize he... him. I would say he's decent enough. His, his his voice acting is not too bad, that's for sure. I'd say he probably still needs work before he does make it off there. But as of now, I think he's doing just fine. Getting places where he wants. And his role as Flag was good, even though it was just him and Autotune for the most part. Well, yeah, but like, think of it this way. Still, I'd say the character was okay. Yeah, but not think of okay. it. He, he, he carried the character. Yeah. He carried, for, he carried him. But, like, think of it this way as well, because I feel like if you heard a few of these uh, titles, you would kind of, like, actually realize that he has more range as well as more underrated, like, roles than anything else. Because I could tell That's you this much, true. right? He was in God of War Ragnarok. Did you know that? Hmm. Yeah. He was in nope. God of War Ragnarok. As the squirrel, uh, Rata, uh, Rata Tusker. As the squirrel, okay. Yeah. You had me and you may have lost me. <laughs> the the <kidding>. squirrel. <laughs> and then he was also in Ranking of Kings. Oh, Ranking of Kings. Yeah. He was in Ranking of right. Kings. Okay. He was also in Like a Dragon. Uh, for multiple characters. He was like also... Like a dragon. Oh, the Yakuza game. Right. Mm -hmm. He was also in One Ooh. Piece. Uh, okay. He was also in Adventure Time Distant Lands. Okay, so he's definitely been in places. Got he's it. been in a lot of places. That that That's my whole point. Like, people, right, take into the consideration of like okay i recognize that voice but i don't know where it's from but i don't really care but for me when i hear that voice i go i know who he is i know exactly who he is and the funnest thing about knowing who he is is that i can point him out for most things um things that immediately came into my head when thinking about him was the Twilight Wings uh, short mini series for Pokemon where he played Mustard. Mm -hmm. And then I played a lot of Monster Prom and he played uh, Brian in Monster Prom. And then because okay. my friend kept on talking about Genshin Impact, I remembered, I can't remember the character's name, but he's in Genshin Impact. I want to say it starts with a K. I don't, I'm not a big Genshin Impact fan, I'm sorry, but... No, you're good, you're good, man. Don't worry about that. It's there. It's a, It's just a gacha game for consoles. Right. And I get characters that you may want, and obviously that's, that's all based on luck. Mm-hmm. But I will say one thing. He was in one of my favorite, just, uh, favorite um, animes that was just like a chill anime called... Agrasuko, he played as this deadbeat boss who is trying to raise like this girl pop uh, group, um, and his character name was Hayoto. My God, I loved that character. I loved all the characters. Not gonna lie, from that series, but just knowing that he was in it kind of just was, yeah. you know. But, but that's my point, though. That's that's how I'm gonna end that with. He, he played a lot of good parts in it. So that's why I'm putting in C tier again. Because that... The fact that there was, it was good gameplay. But also because I feel like the last two are going to be in lower tiers than that. I give it a D. It was a disappointment in me. So I'm going to believe that in, for these last two games. If it gets higher than Borderlands 3, I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. But... <laughs> Oh, one thing to say, they killed off my- they killed off best girl. Cut off Aurelia, some sons of bitches. <laughs> you trigger me so hard because I was just talking about Maya being killed off and then you just have to bring that bitch back up. How dare you? 
I dare the dare. I dare the dare. I, dare I say she has some good characterization and freaking the pre sequel. It was a small, it was a small few, small tangent moment, but she got some redemption, and they ruined her in three. They made her just like what they would, just what they did to Reese and, and Vaughn. All I gotta say, so, yeah. all I gotta say to you is, I hope your dick freezes off when you put it in that ice queen. <laughs> oh, fucking of course. I mean, sad to say that uh, what was his, what's his fuck, what's his fuck face name? Uh, Tyreen or. Troy? Brother. Troy? Troy, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he got some hot actors like, God damn it, that's with me! Wait, he... Oh my god, I forgot that he actually got action with her. What the... Oh. <laughs> how did that... Yep. How did he pull bitches? More bitches than both of us. That, that's he's a... A video game he's a video game character. We're both fucking nerds, so... More like he, 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 we, someone can write a story of him getting bitches in real life. We still can't get any. I might as well become a video game character at this point if that means I get some <laughs> more bitches. Nah, I'd say I'm gonna make you kiss men. No, no. <laughs> oh no. At that point, just kill me off. Just write me out of existence. Anything but that, please. <laughs> No, you love men. <laughs> you love men now. You <laughs> you take schlong up your dong. <laughs> all right, all right, we're about to get all right. We're we're, we're, we're walking to the the monetization right now. So, I think I think we already hit that marker already. But besides the point, yeah, we're going into Tiny Tina's Wonderlands now. I will say, it's basically three slight updates to game mechanics. D and D, uh, you know, content out the wazoo as well as references and whatnot. I will say, lackluster, story wise. Yeah, lackluster in my book too. I I couldn't find any ways to keep playing. N not even that, but the DLCs were just copy and paste of how the uh, boss raids in Borderlands Three were. <laughs> Yep. And each of them cost 20 bucks. Oh, uh, yeah. You're going to tell me I have to buy four DLCs off of Tiny Tina's Wonderland for 80 bucks of copy and paste content? Hell no. <laughs> like, the concept was good, but you rushed it, man. You. That's why, that's why I put Borderlands in C tier. Because I know that that game's going to be in D tier. Again some updates to mechanics of the uh gameplay but other than that nothing else was hitting not even the character creation that was introduced into the series as like a new thing like it wasn't even yeah. good no it wasn't no it wasn't uh, and, you know sad thing is we could have gotten like a chinese uh chinese version or at least uh a chinese company tried to make a borderlands where that that character customization was a thing in their game, but the game got canceled midway through. And we could have played probably a far better character customized Borderlands game version than what we got for Tiny Tina. That's what I'm saying. And then finally, the new, not even the two, the new yeah. Tales of the Borderlands. Uh, F -tier. D, I give it. I give it a D only because there's that one. There's this one character in my latex suit, and she is. Mighty thick, yo, D. What are you? What are you talking about? Wait, what? I like before. Okay, just to give reference to those who don't know what I'm trying to refer to. Before we recording, we were talking a lot of shit about how this new Tales of the Borderlands was not even that good. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, <laughs> this motherfucker brings up latex thickums, and then it's like, what? Uh, uh, yeah, right. So, uh, a forgettable character, but they really have this character designed for her pretty standout. Really stand out. I mean, mainly for the whole comedic stick, for at least, what, two high school girls reunited, except they both hate each other's guts. And, but one's hot, the other's a cripple, but either way, yeah. Oh 
Hold on. But just to say, I, the game is an F tier. The game is definitely an F tier for sure. The the comedy was too far out. Was too far much. Far too much for your average comedic uh, storyline to go with. Uh, the whole plot was probably the most dumbest too. Where they, I believe, or they retcon about sirens or the vault got vault hunters or what was, what was it something about because apparently one of the characters becomes god i don't know why but the character one of the characters becomes god for some fucking reason huh huh yeah that's the thing in the story like, apparently no, like, this one of the main characters okay i don't know man i know that okay another as i say before i have not played a lot of the tales of the borderlands I know that I know that I played actually a little bit. I did play a little bit of ta new Tales of the Borderlands with one of my other friends just to get a glimpse of it. I think the only two scenes I got were the the reverse Mexican standoff and the one where they shot each other because it was funny and they they kept on regening. But like I don't I I don't know what to say, as well as the fact of, I looked up Woman with Latex, New Tales of the Borderlands, I couldn't find it. Uh, look up characters, it. look up the character wiki. Okay, I, I'm going to, I'm going to look it up, uh, characters, there we go, um, yeah, so, playable characters. Uh, we have Octavio, Fran, and Anu. Um, do you hang at on, least possibly on. remember her name? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look this up real quick so that we can continue on. But I can't find it anywhere. Yeah, I can. I can look up the character. She's not a playable character. She is a side character. That's what I said before. Oh, yeah, oh, that's okay. See, I'm st I'm stupid as all hell, man. Is it good. Diamond Danelle? Uh, Diamond Danelle. It sounds like her. If if the, if the context of why she is named that. Uh, Octavio yeah, owes yeah. Danielle for many unspecified favors, but can still be called in the first episode to help him escape a group of invading. Uh, Teddy or soldiers by assassinating a squad commander with her sniper rifle. In the end of the game, where all the player characters survive and start a corporate start a corporate consulting business, she can be seen in the background as one of the firm employees. That's all that it says about her. But I don't know if that's her or not. Uh, I'm trying to look up her character. Jesus Christ, even the fandom wiki doesn't have her. Are you that's, shitting me? That's what I'm saying, dude. It's like, you brought up this thing. Now now as a male brain cells going off, like Haywire, it just makes me want to just, you know, be curious. But I can't find it. Can't find it anywhere. Dang. If this, if anything, I feel like I just got played. Sad face. You didn't get played. I am trying to look up this, this one character. <laughs> this but one. Going to, going to, but somehow going to wait. No. Was it Rita? No, that's not. Oh wow! Thanks for. Hang on, I'm pretty sure I had to look through a fucking okay. YouTube video just to find her name. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me look at YouTube real quick and then just pulling off the scenes with her in it. Wait. Hold up. Is it like... Sending it in our DMs real quick. Is it this? 
If so, then yeah, it was da Diamond Danielle. Not her. No? Not all? It's called, her name is called Reba. Reba? R-E-B-A. Oh, Reba. Reba. Yeah. Bro, she looks like someone's aunt. I am now highly disappointed. I don't. I don't. Oh, I don't. There, there should, there should be. Okay, I found her, found her character on the wiki for some. That took a while. Oh no no no, she's thick. She is damn thick. Oh no, I get that, but she looks like someone's aunt. She looks like That's someone. Nice. I'm putting a bag over her head before I do anything with her. That's you're missing all I can out. Say. You're missing out. No, not at all. I think I am perfectly a okay with missing out an enough. <laughs> but this is probably the best reason why, you know, F tier, F tier, because yeah, of all yeah. that. Yeah. 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 All right. But we're just going to quickly go into villains real quick. So let's just let's just be real here. Commander Steel, we already brought her up real quick. Let's be real here. So she was not that recognized. She was rushed off very quickly and she wasn't really built up very well as a character. I'll put her in what B tier? What do you think? Uh -huh. D tier is fine. I say she she's very un she was she could have had more role into the story. She definitely could have need she definitely needed more of a role in the story. I Especially will, the fact that she also is one of the siren characters. Right. I will also say Jack S tier. Enough said. Yep. Guaranteed S tier. Um I will say then next we got Colonel Hector. From the Lilith uh, DLC. Eh, uh, I mean, C, C tier. Yeah, C -tier. basically. He he's similar to Commander Steel, but at least something was somewhat developed in with him, as well as the fact of being like he had some more importance to him than Commander, but not a lot. Um Colonel eh. Then we have another Colonel. Colonel Zarp. Uh, definitely average. C, just C. Yeah. She wasn't okay. She had a, she had a reason to why she was doing being the antagonist, but overall she was just, she really didn't do much. She was just there, just to uh, yeah. for the prequel, for the prequels. C for Colonels, am I right? Uh, just for the average. Characters, I guess, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I was just trying to make a joke, and now it's rude. Ah, god damn it. And they call me the butcher. Yep. Because that was a terrible joke. Ah. Yeah. I'm gonna cry about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will say this, though, for the twins. I'm actually gonna put Tyrene in D tier, but Troy in F tier. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah, Troy actually had a character moment after we actually start talking with them. At least uh, after the whole app, uh, once we reached the uh, planet, something with Eden 4 or something. But You're giving yeah, he has Troy credit? Moment. Wait. Okay. I think I know exactly which scene you're talking about. Okay. I see your point. So, what? Both D tier then? I would say I'd give Troy at least a C tier. He had a potential to be a great villain. Especially the fact that we, when you look at it, he was more or less of the side character to uh, his his sister right. in terms of the whole rivalry and the whole fact that they're doing the whole leadership of the bandit clans and becoming the almighty powerful while doing Twitch. Mm. And, no, he was, and he really didn't have much to he didn't really have much of a light to shine until he until he got Maya's powers. Right. Um. So with Tyrene, then we leave her in D tier, then. Yeah, D tier. Her motivation as to why she she goes down this path is just 
is so ridiculous. Right. No, I get that. Uh, uh, granted, granted, two kids trapped on the planet with their father, who was also the founder of all the vaults, and the fact that he cuts them off from society, or at least as a whole, as a whole, really does some, something to kids' yeah. mentalities. But if anything, I will agree with that because I can't, I can't put her in F tier because of the fact being that, you know, I would hit that. I would not. You would not. Now with that haircut. No, now with that haircut. Now with the personality. Okay, she could change. Moments, she could change her uh, haircut. She could shut the hell up. But you know, I don't know. I would. I, I would not hit that. No. Bro, you just need a little bit crazy instead of a little bit of dominatrix in your life, bro. I'm pretty crazy. I pay. I. I'm going for Aurelia. That's crazy enough, right there. <laughs> Oh my god anyways um okay this is this is more on you than me for the tales of the borderlands the original first one not the second where do we put valerie yeah. and um hugo for villains uh see they really they really do do much i mean sure voice the great voice actor on hugo and all but not much of a impact for a villain character really just a typical corporate asshole who's willing to screw people over that type of deal not right. much it, yeah if anything we have a lot of c tiers right now look at that <gasps> oh yeah that's that's kind of saddening because it goes s tier yeah we already know and then it just goes C tier, and then D tier. It, it, there's really no other character that can top Jack in terms of how they carry themselves through the story right. at all. Right. I mean, there, there are definitely some people trying, but they just could not live up to what we got as a character. True enough. Now we got playable characters. Okay. I wish I could have skipped that. <laughs> that uh, that ad was just like, bruh. Please. That's <laughs> pleasure, by the way. <laughs> I'm like, God, gosh dang it. Um, okay, so... Okay, so first off the... Like, right off the bat, we got our first four playable characters. Let's just go ahead and rank them off. Not quickly, but well enough, okay? So... Alright. So we got... Out of the first four, the OGs themselves, okay? We have mm -hmm. Lilith, Roland, Mordecai, and finally Brick. Okay? So those are right. those are the OGs. So how are we rating them character development wise throughout the series? So from when they first hit the screen to when they were put off the screen because i'm not gonna lie to you i would put lilith definitely in s tier with roland clouded reason why mordecai in s tier but then a tier for brick that's me that's me personal because roland plays a very important part through one and two with how he establishes himself as an ex-military um, soldier, as well as in the comics too, that he plays more of like developing himself more as a rebel than anything else, in which he creates the Crimson Raiders. And then plays an important role of um, trying to have everyone try to adjust after his death, but also to move on knowing that he is now the inspiration of their victory uh with lilith she plays pivotal roles in every game that she's been in yes including three i know but she plays a pivotal I, I, role that... it's the fact that like she was a rebel herself too she had no care in the world and she develops from one to two at least as that said rebel but after Roland's death, she has to stick, you know, stick up as a leader for the Crimson Raiders. 
and fit into that role, which is more clarified through the DLC that was given for her, as well as 3. Even though he, she even lost her powers, she was a, still a strong leader. That's just me saying it story-wise. Mordecai is just more of a clouded reason of like, he was my first character I've ever played. And the fact being that he's just that, you know, drunk alcoholic that everyone loves and enjoys. I mean, let's be real here. Mm, not as much as Brick, I would say. Okay, Brick is the comedic relief. I get that. I 100% get that. But Brick for me is more of, yes, comic relief, and that's it. But he's good amount of comic relief, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, it, he is. So that's why I'm putting him in A tier. I can't put him all the way in S tier because the fact being that he, he's nothing more than just comic relief at the end of the day. But he does play the pivotal role of reinforcements in two. I can give, I can definitely give Roland an S, Mordecai an A, Brick an A, and Lilith. I would say I would give her, eh, I'll give her an A. Uh, man, just everyone A's except yeah. for just one character. Dang, man. Mercy. Yeah, that's just that. Oh yeah, that's how I roll with that. Okay, so for me, it's everyone S except for Brick, but repeat yours one more time. Roland S, Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick are A. So every so only Roland is S. Okay, I see it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I will say this. I will put in agreeance to both of us, I'll put Brick and Mordecai A, but then Lilith and Roland S. Only because that they play more actual story-driven roles than the other two. But my other reasoning why for Mordecai being an S was because of the sad but faithful truth of in you know in the second uh, game he loses his bird, and I felt very bad okay. for him for losing his bird. Like holy shit, man, that was demented as we all did. hell. We all did. I mean, we were all thinking we we're gonna save fucking. We we're all gonna save his bar, but as far as handsome Jack rolls in, bring this character out to be the S tier that he is. He's like, oh yeah, explosion, bird head blows up, right? He's like, yeah, this guy, yep, he's an asshole, but damn it, he's really awesome. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> um, what? At the end of the day, yeah, I will. If you agree with me, with at least we, if we put Lilith in S tier, I'll put Mordecai in A tier. Because uh, if we, if we have to give it, we have to give it more to character development than anything else. Because you do ha you do get where I'm coming from with the fact of how she has developed from one through three, right? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I've seen the character grow. Yeah, and I'll admit, yeah, yeah, she does it deserve it. Okay, and then we would have, hold on. Okay, so next is Borderlands 2. We have, out of the group, six characters. We have Zero, Maya, Salvador, Axton, Gage, and Krieg. I will say personally, out of all of these, Salvador... All right is again comic relief literally like and because of borderlands 3 they butchered him and just made him guess what comic relief and the fact being that he had so much more going for him other than i'm just the bounty on every world's freaking board and he cares about his abuela i think he believe what he uh, cares about his grandma right so i have to put him in c tier for me S tier automatically for Zero, for the mysteriousness, for his high Qs, for his, you know, his kit that we get to play with. But surprisingly, out of all characters being ruined, I don't think they ruined Zero that much in 3. No, not really. Uh, in 3, he was, he, he was there with during the time of Atlas. After that, we don't see him as much. 
And then I would say Axton also goes into C. Because he had potential. He was similar to Roland for being an ex-military person. But the only reason why was because he was... I think it had a story going around his wife, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Like, yeah. him and his wife, they were both in the military, and then something happened, so then he left. Um, they were both with uh, the Dow Co They were both with the Dow Corporation military side. They were both the same company, mm -hmm. and after they had a they had a terrible relationship, and yeah, obviously that ends in. I'd say there wasn't much. Uh, in three, he becomes a talk show host, and he has and he sells like very, very lewd body pillows himself. But that also has a turn with him. Yeah. So except he's taking profit off his body and selling his turret. So yeah. I mean, that's okay. That's that's how they ruined his character. He had so much going for him, and then they just do that to him, and then it's he he goes into C tier with Salvador because they're both commentators. Wait, does that make yeah. us both C tier then? Because we're both commentating about this. Yeah, pretty much. Man, I wish I was higher up. <laughs> um, I will... Only in your dreams, man. Oh, Only yeah. in your dreams. I will say <laughs> Maya being the last remaining of the main crew. She had a very good character rolling up until they had to kill her off prematurely. But they yep. somewhat redeemed her through the Psycho DLC, but not very well. I give her B tier because of that, sadly. I wish I could give her higher. Mm. But, but it's the sad, but it's sad because it's like she had potential and then they just kill her off. And then not even in a good way where she would have been mem like memorable, but in a bad way yeah. because she, <laughs> she gives the responsibility to a brat that I don't really give a shit about. Oh, yeah. So, sad but fateful truth. Then Gage, I also have to put in C tier. Because she, she, actually, no. D tier. Her kit was amazing. Her character, not given a lot of light to. But then in three, she's a wedding planner. What? And, and, I don't know if it's hinted, or, I don't know if it's a thing, but apparently, uh, no, I'm not going to talk about that. Yeah, she's now wedding planner, and while still be on the run after what she did to her rival, asshole of a classmate. Yeah, and that's what it is. It's just like, bro, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah, what am I supposed to do with her? Because she's, to me, she was a wonderful character, and then they just do that to her. Yeah, they did that to her. But, However, okay. Krieg, S tier. Definitely. Because, surprisingly, they didn't ruin him in the, you know, the Psycho DLC. They didn't. Uh, it was very well put together. And he was more than just the melee joke character that we were introduced to in 2. Oh, yeah. Like, they actually built upon him and gave him more than what we were expecting. Yeah, uh, yeah, we definitely had a good character. Uh, Krieg is definitely a good character. I'd say S tier for Krieg. Mm -hmm. For sure. Gage, yeah, I'd say they really could have done their character more justice if they had to, but... Like, uh, sadly, was... they gave Salvador and Axton more than what they gave Gage. Right. Like, literally. But we're now going into the pre-sequels now before we fully go into that um i will like to say um the first character claptrap f tier uh, uh Wait, yeah, yeah 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 because no here's my reasoning it's because the fact being that even though his kit is fun to play with it's literally just a gimmick the story that they tried to give to him in pre-sequel, I'm not gonna lie, was just set up for failure for him. Because, yes, he played as the fool, but 
it didn't really resolve anything in my head to give him more than what he is, which is the annoying character that everyone is supposed to love and adore. Yeah, I'd say it was mainly there for community stick. I'd say people still loved him for his stupid, for his annoying annoyance, really. Yeah, but that's it. And in three, he got more annoying, which is surprising. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't say that. I feel like he was less used around that time. Maybe side quest he was stupid, or I think they gave him a good character arc in in three. Brother, someone. Brother. I played the game to where I got most of the achievements. There was one fucking hard-ass achievement where I had to follow this motherfucker and collect freaking Bitcoin. Really? Yes. That, that's a mission? Yes. Wait, in, in, in yes. Oh, that's fucked. Yeah. Oh, that's fucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I had to hear him talk about, like, freaking the whole, like, freaking, um, what is the, what is the scam called? Not just Bitcoin, but, like, oh, cryptocurrency. I had to hear him talk about cryptocurrency the whole time. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, yeah. That's also bad. Oh, who's, oh my god. Anyways, <laughs> uh, Wilhelm, C tier, because there was not yeah. a lot given to him in Borderlands Two. We're given character a wise, not so much. Yeah. Uh, character class kit, definitely good. Yeah, I okay. would give him a B. I give him a B. You give him B. Mainly for his playstyle. Character-wise, yeah, it's a C tier, but uh, playability-wise, not too bad. B. Alright. Well, Nisha gets a D, that's for sure. The only Actually, thing I got... Well, okay. No, 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 no. Hear me out, hear me out. Alright. Even though I, since, I, since I gave Aurelia, since I gave Aurelia a bit of a, a little heart and love, I'd say she, uh, Nisha also gets some of that love, too. And her playstyle... It's literally just a hack bot, but it's it's in a fun way. She's a good character to play as. Character wise, uh, sadistic, twisted, lawbringer that will kill anyone in her own w w twisted sense of law and justice. Well, yeah, because <laughs> she. Yeah, because in her character, she's an abuse like abuse victim. But yeah. I never, I personally myself didn't enjoy her kid at all. The reason why I was saying D tier. But what were you thinking? I also gave her a B tier. Okay, I'll meet you in the middle. We'll put her in C. Alright. Yeah. Athena. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I really don't know what to put her at because, like, she's more of a confusing character because she was introduced in one, right? She was introduced mm -hmm. to one in the DLCs, and then we were given to her more, like, story through the pre-sequels. Not even two, pre-sequels. And then yep. we were given even more story in Tales of the Borderlands, and that was it. Yep. And I don't know what much else story that she was given. It was just more of, I'm here. And yes, there were parts where we could keep track of and see how she grows, but it wasn't that much, nor was it given enough time to grow. Yeah, her character really doesn't change much other than the fact that she gets married, lives a happy life, and, uh... Yeah, she marries the Australian the chick, land. doesn't she? Yeah, she marries Jane. Uh, character... She hates, she hates Atlas, gets married, uh, her character, she at least somewhat is remorseful, she's, she, she knows that she does, she's, she does, she wants to do the right thing, even at the cost of, even though, I don't know, I mean, her character really hasn't changed all the way through from one, the pre-sequels and Tale of the Borderlands, other than that, she tries to be good, but somehow ends up making a mistake here and there. Yeah. So and oh, go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, in the pre-sequel, obviously, maybe she didn't want to work for Jack, but then again, but of course, she was on Atlas due to the fact that she betrayed them and killed most of their leader, killed most of their members, so she's more more or less on the run from them. Right. And she's on her own and has no money trying to survive. Right. But I will give her a seek. I would definitely say her character definitely deserves to see her kit, her playstyle as a character. Not too bad. More like the it's pretty much just a version of Captain America, you could say. Mm. I give it maybe at least a low B. I feel like you're giving her too much credit for where she is supposed to be. Because uh, again, like yeah, uh, I I had I had fun playing as her for a while when I when I had a character made. I think she's like level thirty, level twenty. Yeah, but I could I could I could see you with Nisha at least a little bit meeting you in the middle for that but for athena i feel like you're giving her too much credit like yeah she was fun to play with but if we're going off of character wise it's just i don't know what to yeah say. it's just yeah, like she was given enough. the she was given the short end of the stick and then i wish that she would get b or c but it's just like i don't know what else to say other than She's a vengeful person that killed off a lot of people, and now she's living in hiding, technically speaking, and got married. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Um, you want to give her a C or a D? You said D. Sadly. Yeah. I'll meet you at the line there. D. Yeah. Um, I I'm trying to think of what else that she has done, but or at least had some growth, but she really doesn't. Timothy, oh, yeah, D is fine with me. Timothy is also D for me. I'm sorry to say. Literally the same thing. Pre-sequels, that's the first time he's introduced. Literally just a uh, double ganger. But the thing is, yeah, his kid was... Later, a DLC later. Yeah, and then he was eh. And then we soon, yeah, see him in DLC when he's stuck in a casino, apparently. That's literally where he ends up, in the casino. Cool. Not even in Hyperion base or anything like that, no. No, technically, technically it's the casino that's owned by Jack. Which well, no, I get that. Hyperion, which is but... underneath Hyperion control. No, I get that part. What I don't get is the fact that he goes from Hyperion base to all the way over into a different sector of space to where the casino is. Uh, I think he was more or less on the run after Jax's death, or or at least during the whole fiasco with how Jack. Uh, honestly, I don't remember this. Is the, it's the reason why More Life Three is so bad that there's really nothing too memorable about it, DLC, DLC or story wise. Right. Not the greatest. Not uh, the casino DLC. Not the greatest. Definitely not. Right. I would say he was more or less on the run, he just ended up there, and when he tried to escape, unfortunately, he he escaped at a bad time where the casino went to hell. Right. So, yeah, I'm putting him in D tier because of the fact being that, literally, in my personal opinion, just even though he's on the run, trying to live a different life, that's literally it. That's all he's given. He, he's a failed test experiment in his own eyes, and he's trying to escape the life that he was already living underneath the a persona of Jack. I would say if, if I would say if the if this DLC had better right or if 2K or 4K, I forgot the company. Jesus Christ. Uh, uh it's uh, Gearbox and 4K. No, no, 2K. No, 2K. Final <laughs> answer. Sorry. Okay, 2K bo or Gearbox, I think they just, need, they just needed better writers to help give a better story for these characters, really. That, that's probably the reason why. True. I feel like if yeah, there was better writers, this, Speak these characters probably be a better place. But Speaking other than that, of, no. speaking of uh, we got the Borderlands 3 characters. We have Mosey. Amara, uh, we have Zane, and we got Flak uh, Trap. Now, to give a little bit more of information on each of these characters, um, 
so apparently Mosey's from the black the uh, not black the um the vlad off. Vlad off. Was it, uh... yeah she's one of the vlad off soldiers and she's one of the remaining units that was put into a suicide mission when she was supposed to enter with her iron bear and she's one of the remaining okay. soldiers that is able to use an iron bear proficiently if i'm not mistaken no you're you're right about that she's the last survivor of her unit that got wiped out in a corporate war mm -hmm. or something Mm -hmm. um, and then Amira is a uh, very like strong and well strong in the sense of like strong headed because the thing is she is always wanting Amara, to look for the, she's the, uh, she's a the siren. new yeah. muscle the new muscle girl that people said for once her image came out well yeah so, because like so she's the <laughs> yeah, she's a cliche, I'm independent, strong woman, because I have my hair cut on one side and then off to the other. But she's literally a character that looks for a fight anywhere she goes. And the reason why she becomes a Vault Hunter is because she knows that all along the way she's going to find the fight that she's looking for. And I think she earned the title of something Tiger, I believe. Uh, tiger or something, yeah. Uh, for most, that, she was my first playable character in, in the new Borderlands 3. Very fun to play. I give her a B. Amara. Uh, I give her a D. Yeah, the whole character personality and what looking for a fight. Not not really interesting enough. Yeah. I mean, I mean the same could be same for previous Bolt Hunters, but I don't know. I feel like either a C or D would work with her. Right. And if anything, um, I'm trying to think of the title that she was given, because... Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. She's the tiger of some... You don't really worry about it. Yeah, I'm not apparently finding it, but basically, though, I will agree with the D tier for, um, I will agree with D tier for Elisa Mara. For Mosey... I was going to put her in D tier just because of how lacking her story was and how flat she is, but you do come up with a good point of how enjoyable she is as a character when playing her. So I will put her in C tier. Me in the middle. Alright. Um, by the way, for those who are also wondering, like, what the heck, you guys just skipped uh, Aurelia. I, there's no convincing this man not to put her in S tier. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even with my own personal grievances with this woman, this evil, sadistic woman. Yeah, no, there's no convincing this man. I, I, I put her in S tier just because this man is going to be <laughs> over my head Bore for it. Yeah. Borderless 3, they could have made her a good character. They could have made her a very interesting character in 3. Instead, no, we, they turned to a villain and they made her an enemy boss. We fight and probably just break or loot, but no, they don't do that to my girl. No, fuck that. Fuck that. So They also that. made her <laughs> tap the ass of a very weak, fragile, egoed man. And I'm just like, bro, that that that's sad. That's sad for even your standard woman. Um so interestingly enough for the other two characters, they actually have a bit of story with them, surprisingly. Yeah. Zane um, Flagger. <laughs> Interesting enough. So Zane oh, wait, the funny thing is the fact that after these characters were brought out, they're like the most broken, most overpowered characters that they got nerfed just in favor of the whole right. people play Amara and Moe's more. Right. And I think they got that rebalance too. But even then Moe's got freaking disgusting and broken because of her nuke build. Oh yeah, that was fun. That was fun. But I, I played the new build and that shit was just phenomenal. Dude, I watched my friend do like five million damage just from one nuclear blast, but he was constantly doing it up until his iron bear went away, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Mo the most build was good. 
I mean, early on, it was a difficult one. They didn't have the buffs and patches, but now, at least when they did the whole the nukes and everything, oh, dude, right. pure, pure ecstasy right there. Right. Um, I will say, for the stories for at least Zane and Flag, starting off with Zane, he's actually the brother of Captain Flint, the younger brother. And the thing, yeah. and the thing is, his best, the best thing that we get out of him is that because of this, he's always like joining groups of mercenaries and then leaving them and betraying them, and then constantly doing that. But he also has gained, I think, his technology illegally, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me double check. Zane Flint. I just had it. Gosh darn all of you. There we go. Yeah, Zane Flint, brother of the bandit Baron Flint, and Captain Flint, who began his life of violence as a teen. He's left them and joined a Black Ops mercenary unit and has since became one of the most capable operatives of the galaxy, doing odd jobs for the highest bidder. And the thing is, for doing these kinds of mercenary and assassination jobs, Zane found it increasingly difficult to enjoy the moment's peace due to many people just wanting him dead. So that's why he just became, you know, a Volt Hunter. Literally to just run from it all. He wants some peace and goddamn quiet. If that's yeah. not if not if that's not character development, I don't know what is. Just the fact being like I might be flat, but at least I'm flat because I'm wanting to retire because of how, like, how bored, not bored, but how much of a migraine I have from all these people trying to kill me at once. Uh, his character, or his character backstory is not, it's not, it's not that bad. So I'll put him in B tier. Yeah, I'd give him a beer. I'd give but, him a B. But I will also say for Flax, he's not as mysterious as we think he is for uh for zero sense because the thing that we know about him is that he used to have been one of the robots for the grand um archivist before he developed a different um uh, algorithm to enjoy blood and death and from there he yeah. develops through the story as this uh, robot developing, you know, relationships with, you know, creatures and modifying those creatures because they were meant to die out in the wilderness. He developed a taste for blood out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And now he makes, now he makes a pat, now he becomes uh, a Pokemon master to go around grabbing monsters and enslaving them to fight for their battles. In which case, the reason why I'm putting him at A tier is because of how his characters develop, but also, you know, homage to Pro ZD. Homage. So, A tier for that. Homage? He's not dead. No, but he's underrated, brother. Music is a music app. With music premium, you'll have the I mean, he just, he just plays the whole character. He just plays the character. A homage. I mean, that's usually meant for people who are dead. Nah, man. When he's so underrated to the point where I feel like they think that he's dead. But... Alright, all right. stop, all right, stop simping for the Asian guy who's just there, okay? I all can right, simp we get for it. whatever voice actor I want. <laughs> you can't stop me. Ah. Okay. But to finalize the rest, we have R Rise... Or Reese. Reese. Sorry, Reese. I don't Reese, know why man. I said rise. What the? I think I'm growing tired. Oh, lordy. We yeah. Have Reese, Fiona, and then the the quadruples. The quadruplets of new. So they automatically get F tier. I don't. I don't care. Reese. Hold up, hold up, hold up. No, 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 no. The, 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 the... Hey, hear me out. Hear me out. We see this character's grow from Tales. Okay, I know you haven't played the Tales of Boy, but I've seen this character grow from Tales of Boy. Well, I wasn't talking about uh, Reese. I was talking about the four from New. I was talking about four from New. I said uh... F tier for them. So, 
because uh, of Dom, yeah. Now, I think the only thing I know about Reese, other than him being in that game, is from Borderlands 3, he's owning Atlas at that time, and he's getting irritated with the fact that he has to fight Malawan, and I think Kaya, uh, yeah, but, uh, Kaya uh, Jawa, yeah, Junior. And then uh, we'll, call him, we'll call him MacGuffin Sip guy, I guess. Fuck it. I yeah. don't care about his name. But the wannabe zero guy. Yeah, basically. And he has his battle stash, or his war stash, as he likes to call it. Um, yeah, boy, they, they 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 murdered him. They they just they just just butchered my boy. So let's let's just do the honors of just play some and see for now. Yeah. I mean, boy, three sealed his deal. Beyond that, she's gone. I mean, after, after, once we came out, no one knows what the hell happened to her, so... Apparently, it said when I was looking into for new, for, like, information, she narrates for the new game. What? Yeah. So, apparently, she's not gone-gone, but we don't know what ha the hell happened. Um... So... Why? I don't know why, uh, but... D tier, I, I guess, because they don't. Well, no, you know what? No, C tier, because the fact being that if Reese is in C tier, she was probably left at a good position from how you've been talking about the game. So there's no reason to dock her lower because of the fact that she hasn't been in other games. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, well, just to go through the this is for the games. All right, this is, these are for the games. This is for the villains. And finally, this is for the characters. Now, do keep in mind, at the end of the day, these are our opinions. And a lot of things that we say might be stupid, might be overall cringy, or overall just something that you don't agree with. But it's something that me and Fallen here are very passionate about. We, as I'll constantly say, we'll constantly want to say our opinion out there because, and I quote, this is what we normally do. We have conversations on an everyday basis, and like a bard should, we listen to stories, whether if it is just someone's opinion or not, because that tells us how people grow from where they came from or what they grew up with. In this case, for me and Fallen, will be video games and movies. And as we continue down the road, we'll see more of what we have in stored, where we might go back to Star Wars so that way we could do video games. Or better yet, rate our, you know, favorite waifus from anime. Who the hell knows? <laughs> but I will tell you this. We're going to continue bringing these episodes out on Wednesdays for you, Tuesdays for us, late at night, because that's when the cringe and tiredness comes into play, as well as the tongue ties. But... Oh yeah, plenty of tongue ties, unfortunately. <laughs> we do hope that you ha guys have a good adventure on your journeys out there, and good luck on whatever life gives you. After all, that's all you need. That and a little bit of bardic inspiration. So, I bid you all farewell, and have a good one. You want to say anything to them? Oh, they did a really a dirty man. How <laughs> did they make me kill my girl? Oh my fucking god, that's how we're ending <laughs> this shit. Okay, so that's all for yeah. now.